Welcome back to Cheche here on Citizen TV. Our guest this morning is Professor Peter Kagwanja, CEO of the Africa Policy Institute. He's offering us his opinions on uh, how the uh, government has uh, performed 100 uh, days into their term. Um, and of course, um, one of the key pledges was abolishing maternity fees. Um, and we saw that happen um, through a directive. Um, we saw the chaos that ensued. Um, and so far, we have seen, we have heard and uh, watched um, as uh, the, the fees have been abolished, but what mothers are not getting is the care. Mm. They have a place to go and have their babies, mm. but they don't necessarily get the care that they need. Mm. And so the question becomes, you know, was this thought through? Mm. Um, it doesn't seem to be couched in any sort of policy framework. Um, uh, nurses and doctors are complaining and public hospitals mm -hmm. are complaining about being overworked and not having the facilities they need to cope with, you know, um, the, m you know the increased workload mm -hmm. as a result of this uh, directive. Mm. I think y we, we need, to answer that question, you need to start from what exactly, how government op or operates. Uh, in the campaign mode, governments are usually populist. Victorious governments are usually populist. And they come up with populist agenda. The challenge of governments coming to office is to give that populism uh, a practical dimension to, it, uh, to itself. And what we have seen with the Jubilee, I think they saw there are some, within 100 days, they knew they would, somebody would be sitting somewhere judging them. And therefore, they went for the so-called row-hanging fruits. And among the row-hanging fruits is basically uh, issues like ma maternity, the laptops and, and those kind of things. Those are raw quick hanging wins. fruits. Yeah, quick wins, uh, as we say. The quick wins, in, in so far as the medical is concerned, that's really a quick win. They picked, the, they plucked that one very fast. Um, the question would be now uh, the, the same uh, challenge that faced the Kibaki government uh, and the late Saitoti as a minister for education. Uh, you have promised the free primary education. education. How do you make it a reality? The first 100 days, the first two years was a, a barrage of criticism that you, you know, you, we have free education, but where are desks, where are books, where are this? And the same questions that you'd ask, where is the medic medicine, where is the care, and where so on. Where is the water? Where is the water for, the, for this? Uh, so basically, it is translating populism to the practice. That takes, takes a, a great deal of time. So I, get, I guess the government is going to get uh, some bashing with the specific nitty gritties of how to uh, move, uh, to, to make uh, that uh, directive uh, operational. Look at the budget and the amount of money that was allocated to that sector. And it begins to tell you practically whether the government is committed uh, or it is still remains at the level of populism. I would say they, they seem to be committed. The budget was, was, was fairly hefty uh, for the medical sector. Uh, in that regard. And I, uh, one would hope that in the next uh, 100 days, uh, they're going to translate now from, uh, you know, the free, uh, uh, you know, maternity care to now uh, more uh, quality uh, kind of a care. That's, that's how I would answer that. What do you say about uh, the fight against corruption in this government? Are we, are we in, the, in the way or are we stuck? Mm. I, I, I have not seen, we have not, in the last 100 days, I don't think we have had them as cuddle. They like the way you would talk about uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, agro leasing and golden bar. We've not had a scandal in the last 100 days. I would say wait for another one to one and a half years because even under uh, the Kibaki government in 2003, you didn't get a, a scandal. You were just dealing with the old corruption. Uh, the, you, we have just said the government has just come into office. So the tendering and all those things have not started. So, uh, I if you look at what is up in the National <coughs> Treasury Fund, then it's the same. Mm -hmm. There's scams there. The, 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 the scandal, I mean, and, and, and that's what we had before the election when we were talking about the this opening of uh, fake clinics and so on and so forth. So it's a continuation of the old, as we would say. I'm kind of saying, let's hold, let's hold our horses for one and a half years. And if a scandal doesn't come up, then you'd say, this government seems to be sailing clear of corruption. But hang on, hasn't there been a problem, though, um, mm. with some loopholes uh, through which uh, money is lost? Mm. Um, say, for instance, when you look at uh, Nairobi County, and one of the first things mm. the governor, Evans Kidero, did mm -hmm. was to go after the loopholes, found mm. um, ghost workers, 
um, found um, people who had um, awarded themselves tenders illegally or inflated contracts, dealt with them, and is embroiled in court cases mm. over um, corruption. Mm. Um, and you could say that on the national um, front, I mean, what was the Transparency International mm. um, um, ranking? Mm. Kenya is one of the worst, mm. um, most corrupt <laughs> um, yeah. um, places. Yeah. So it should be fairly easy, if there's the will, to find quick wins on corruption, should it not? Mm. Uh, w corruption in this government would come in two forms. First, is dealing with past corruptions. Fair and enough. And that they can still do that. And, 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 and that, in itself, if you go, if you look at the, the surgical operation in the su in the courts in in 2003, uh, they cost <laughs> people's jobs because they were saying you are now victimizing a specific communities and specific people. So you have to work very very carefully on. Uh, that past past uh, issues. I guess the, what you can judge the government squarely on uh, for now is what it has done itself. And uh, what I'm trying to say is that n in one 100 days, nothing much uh, has been done even to, uh, to, to detect what, what uh, corruption would have taken. Uh, you can rightly say that it has not have had the backbone, for example, if you want to use that word, uh, to deal with the past crimes, which is a political imperative rather than and anything else. Uh, two, uh, this would also require us to go to the, to the commission or the, 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 the body dealing with the issues of, of corruption itself. Which and still doesn't have and a, see a yeah? Which still doesn't have um, a head. Yeah. It, it's operating uh, with a deputy. That, that's what they need to do. If, 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 they, if they, I mean, uh, you know, the fight against corruption within that <coughs> body has slowed down, then you, here we, we, we go to the C minus of David, uh, or that matter, if, if it's going through. But I guess this is a matter that would require more, more, more research uh, in regard to uh, how it has dealt with past crimes. If you look at the Goldenberg issue, uh, if you look at the anger releasing issues and all those mat matters, the how the government is going to deal with those in, in the future to ensure that we don't have the repeating mm. of the same is going to be a David, would challenge. you agree with your professor's um, assessment? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I agree at some point uh, <coughs> with uh, what uh, Professor Legrand is saying. Uh, with the whole idea that there isn't yet enough, I mean, we haven't marked enough time in office for Jubilee to give concrete uh, condemnation or approval. Uh, but he has soft pedaled a little on the mm. matter of the you know low hanging fruits, the quick <laughs> wins, uh, because there is a lot of argumentation out there about, for example, the laptop project. Mm. Uh, and you, as an educationist, obviously you know who has taught at the university and hand handled all, all of us and others. There are arguments being uh, proffered that the laptops are coming too early in the government, mm. the, in the education system. Mm. that there were other areas that deserve more intervention say you know the whole idea is do you approach it from an individual laptop uh, you know to in, 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 in laptops to individuals or do you want to equip labs in schools do you want to go to primary level or do you want to go to high school level from one and equip schools which don't even have access to internet and, and mm. it uh, mm. and and that is where the problem lies mm. even before implementation people are already seeing there's a whiff of scandal in the whole determination to run through this process, despite all this criticism and arguments, there's no, there's no accommodation of the counter argument to improve uh, the idea, as Omola Kijana would have said, a mm. good <coughs> idea made better. You mm. know, mm. why is that so? And why can't mm. we evaluate the government on that determination and say, look, the same with the maternal health. Mm. Okay, the maternal health one is obviously a straight matter. It's just a matter of allocating the budget because mm. it's a universal need. But this is a need, an intervention in the education system mm. that people think is misplaced in terms mm. of the priorities. Mm. And, and yeah. And I think the, the, uh, if, if I would say, say the, uh, very quickly, it would work. Um, we've talked about translating populism to practice. And policy. And, and, uh, and policy and to policy. Uh, the laptop agenda was a huge yeah, vote catcher as far as the, the, the election was concerned. And it did its work. Translating it into policy uh, itself requires more than just uh, the, the, the populism. Uh, rationalizing it within the education. I think this is where, in terms of the strategists and the strategizing uh, within the Jubilee, this has not been uh, brought mm -hmm. out. <coughs> Listen to this. If Kenya is going to realize Vision 2030, and that the Kenyan workforce is going to match the 20th, 21st century 
which is knowledge driven, you cannot fail to, to visualize that the child who is going to carry vision 2030, who is now going to study the one next year, must be totally knowledgeable in computer. So the word was not the raptor. It was the introducing of IT in school. That, uh, that's, 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 that's essentially the agenda. What's One issue we haven't discussed, devolution. Yes. <laughs> President Kenyatta has been blamed and accused of not being sincere in the implementation of devol devolved systems. Mm -hmm. You have seen what he has done yesterday. They have divided this country into six regions and decided that we are going to have PCs again being called in, uh, regional, national, regional, national regional representatives. And the police commissioners, uh, uh, com county com commanders, now they have got both of you are regional uh, commanders. Mm. This, 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 well, this, this, well, f first and yeah. foremost, whether I mean, the one can say this without any contradiction. I'm saying it because I was uh, with the, the president himself, and I think the deputy was also there in Naivasha, where this system was hammered. Mm -hmm. The way it was done and the way it was passed, nobody would uh, change it. You, devolution is here to stay okay. because it did not come uh, because somebody wanted it or somebody didn't want it. It came because uh, it is in the constitution and the Kenyans wanted it. We're running out the of time, the question so I'm going to try and speed things up a, a bit. Implementation. Yeah. Implementation. Yes. So uh, in, terms of in terms of implementation, the question that is uh, at issue is, do the counties uh, have at present the capacity to do that, to, to, to implement so much money? I think the constitution is very clear. Devolu the amount of money should not be limited to a, cer to a certain uh, extent. It, it should be as much as the county system or county government will be able to absorb into the future. Who judge whether there is capacity or not? That's, a, that's a, the, the, the major question. Okay, fine. So I'll take you back to corruption and misplaced priorities because we haven't quite uh, exhausted that. So within the 100 days, we have um, a proposal for a 700 million shilling office for the retired president. Mm. We have um, renovations plan for the depu uh, deputy president's residence at the, you know, the, to the cost of uh, 100 million shillings. Um, we also have um, basically, it seems, huge um, white elephants mm. um, when it comes to spending and mm. just misplaced priorities Misplace that haven't yeah, I, I, I guess uh, I guess the, the the system of checks and balances that we brought into into question within Parliament mm -hmm. and within the, the commissions that are allocating funds should be uh, the one to, to, to the government has to carry a certain degree of flank. But basically, we as Kenyans have a constitution that has set up commissions. People are paid. How, would, for example, uh, is it arrived at that that kind of money will go here? in the first year. So that's a fail. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's a fail for the government. Mm. Uh, we, let's look at things collectively also, because we have a constitution mm -hmm. that we are implementing. When we say the constitution first of all, is... respect your interesting, because where there's a clear success, yeah. you're able to say, this is good, it's a success, they've passed. Yes. But where there's a clear <laughs> failure, it's yeah. couched in <laughs> collective responsibility <laughs> and let's uh, look at this carefully and let's go back to the constitution mm -hmm. and understand that there are challenges. Mm. Mm. Oh, you, can, you can say that, but I personally would be more interested with a, with a system that works. One time in ancient Rome, they said, the system is so effective that if you get a horse and put it on top, it was, it was two governors and w at the end of the era say, the horse was a very successful but monarch. Do you not find because it you, have a, you have a system. No, no, no. Uh, do you not find it worrying for yeah. a government to come in? Yeah. Um, the deputy president's uh, um, residence had barely been lived in, and then you have renovations, you know, um, costing 100 million shillings. Um, going back to corruption, really, and several of our viewers <coughs> have pointed it out, um, the deputy president has been involved in um, a land case. He's been asked to pay a fine of some 5 million shillings for what we're now calling trespass. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Do you not find the this question? The, de the, de the devil is in the details. I, mm -hmm. I must admit I have not scored into the details of this. Therefore, okay. I cannot judge an outright judgment. But the, 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 the issue is this. 
uh, what, <coughs> what kind of revo renovations are, are being taken in the deputy president's office? That's, I mean, if, if there were no chairs, if there were no walls, soft walls to and divide the offices. And we have to remember that it was uh, also over budget. Over budget. Yeah. The, 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 the construction of that residence. Uh, yeah, that's, that's why I'm yeah. saying the devil is in the detail. Mm. The devil is not in the, in the abstract. Because, I mean, as Kenyans, we have a responsibility to watch over our government. That's what we call the public watch. Uh, and question every expenditure. Uh, it is upon the government to defend <coughs> itself. Why should you, for example, spend 700 million on, a, so on an office? It, it, you, you know, what I seem to get from your analysis, and I think which is the difficulty Woodwork is having with you, mm. is <laughs> that you have no query about the allocations in this budget and the expense thus far. Yeah. That, that is the general, I, I, I my assessment is correct. I, no, I, I, I did d good analysis. I put my words into it. I did an analysis of 100 years in the nation in a big piece. And I, I, have my, I give my reservations. For right. example, mm -hmm. I've already told you I have a problem with the Raptor uh, yes. project. Because not in terms of it's, uh, the, the, the way it is, uh, I mean, that it is not a priority, but the way it is marketed. Because you have to convince Kenyans uh, that this, in, 20, in 2030, you need a started one child who is now here in State House helping with the IT. But so you have to market I mean it I that way. Yeah. Anyway, we'll, we'll get out of this laptop thing. <laughs> but the point is, yes. why would the class one need to be equipped so much for the 2030 vision? I know the class four or five, who is going up in the same system. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Educationally, in terms of even discrimination of the children who are in school, it doesn't pass for me. How That's do why I'm saying how do you equal access, three? equal access if it was light, equal illumination to all the children in school. David, how do you climb a tree? Do you climb from the top or from, from the base? But you have to study, study the one to go up. You, we <laughs> David. I, I, I wouldn't, anyway, I wouldn't agree with you we, uh, on that particular one. But let's say, uh, with, with regard to the whole corruption uh, uh, thing that um, uh, Woodwork is raising, I do think, first of all, uh, that I think so far I have not identified a clear scandal, in my mm. view, mm. that we can attach the government. Yeah. Uh, mm. Uh, this administration too. Uh, there are questionable uh, decisions such as, for example, innovation or enhancement of the deputy presidency, uh, the residence and uh, enforcement and so forth. Uh, you know, but maybe they were merited or not. In fact, my, my key concern is the, the decisions that the executive has taken, which seem to be determined to change things, improve revenue collection, and bring government uh, uh, to more efficient operation, such as, for example, the intervention of the Kenya Ports Authority, uh, clearing the log jam, ensuring cargo is moved quickly. Okay, and, so and that will be your final like question because we, we have to we, 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 uh, My concern, though, is that looking at the entire expenditure proposal uh, and the demands on this government, including the teachers, which has now fallen off, I think that this government could be bankrupt very quickly uh, unless it taxes us more. Which mm. is what I think Kenyans ought to wait mm. for. Mm. Government vehicles. Mm. No, well, b basically, what one is finding is a society trying to get into terms with itself. One, we have this of uh, evolution of expectation. We, you know, from the government, leading to, for example, the teacher strike. If we don't get it now, even though it was pro pro promised 1997, we may never get it again. So you've got to go in and that. And I, and I think you you need to begin to look at uh, the politics, the hard politics, the hard tackling. And you'll give it uh, straight to Jubri uh, uh, that uh, in strict Machiavellian sense, where you are soft outside and very hard inside, uh, the teacher strike was a very great lesson in how to deal <laughs> with, with the populism or with this kind of populist strike. What would have meant if the teachers won? Had the teachers won this strike, this government would most pro probably have gone and bankrupt because mm. it would have been a good template for others to follow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I was Mutegi, any final question or thoughts? I want to talk about vehicles. I mean, when Uhuru was a pre uh, Minister of Finance, yeah. he had given the, the number of the engine capacity of vehicles. Yeah. But when you see his cabinet secretaries and the vehicles they're having now, it's mm. uh, obnoxious. Mm. Well, I, I, g I guess, again, it is a challenge uh, with the government that has to, to face. One of the things is that uh, the government will have to balance its books at the end of the day. And in, in the kind of expectation they have put in people's mind, for example, uh, we, that we, we are now on a takeoff path, that has to be sustained. And sustaining that means essentially ensuring that there is a balance between the wage, the public wage, and the, 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 the production. 
investing in the production sector is going to be more important than investing in those things that quickly win uh, popular support and so on. So it's a, it, it's, it's a very high wire that the government is working now. I would, sh I would share uh, with, the, with the David on this matter that uh, if, people, I mean, if the government is not cautious, definitely is going to be uh, bankrupt because the expectation in the public is overwhelming. The, the expectations they have whipped mm -hmm. in the public is also uh, you know, huge. Yeah, we can certainly see that from the um, comments that are coming in from our viewers, but that's all we have time for now. And so I will thank you, Professor Peter Kagwanja, for your time. Um, I'll also thank uh, David Makali and uh, Motegi Njau of Royal Media Services for um, their time as well as our panelists. Thank you for engaging, for watching Cheche. My name is Udwaka Mimo. Um, do enjoy the rest of your week.